Hey guys, how's it going? So if you followed along with my Newt's vlogs, you will know that I am now officially a professional wand maker. So today I'm actually going to be doing a DIY tutorial on how to make your own wands. You know, since I'm a professional and all. So without further ado, let's get into how to do this. So first, the supplies. We have paints. I picked mostly browns and then a black and a white to lighten and darken it. A glue gun, a paintbrush, an X-Acto knife, and a random stick I found in my yard. You can use pretty much any stick. Just go into the backyard or the park and pick out one. I find it's easiest to work with the ones that are a little bit straighter and thicker is better because it's easier to make it thinner. It is much harder to make it thicker again. But really just pick whatever tickles your fancy. I forgot to mention, I put a newspaper down because this step is a little bit messy, but you can kind of see that from this clip right here. All right, so the first step is going to be removing the extra bark. You don't have to get every little scrap off. You don't have to get it to where it's all the smooth underneath, but basically you want to get off any bark that may come loose. At the same time, what I'm doing here is I personally like when they kind of taper off at the end, so I'm working on that now just so I can kind of visualize the shape a little bit better. As far as the wand itself goes, you can really do whatever you want. You can look on Pinterest for inspiration, you can just kind of go in blind and see what you feel in the moment, you can model it after a specific wand. There are so many options, but basically the steps are going to be the same. So basically we're just going to start with getting the bark off and getting it smooth-ish. Now this is another thing that is really up to you. I don't like it when it looks too too smooth, it just looks too, I don't know, proper to me. But you don't want it to look messy, so it's kind of finding that balance. And again, like the rest of this, it's going to be mostly a personal preference. Also, I should probably mention safety so that nobody cuts off any fingers. Always cut away from yourself. Make sure there are no pets or small children that are going to jump out by the table and get stabbed. And just, you know, be as careful as you can be. Your wand isn't going to work right away, so you won't be able to reattach your fingers if you drop them off. Also, I don't like having the knots in the wood still. I just find them a little bit annoying to work with, so you can't really tell from the angle, but I'm also removing the little knots and kind of smoothing them out a little bit more. But a lot of people, I think, would like those, so it's up to you. All right, and then once you have most of the bark off, then you can go in and look for specific details that you want to do. So I like when there's kind of notches in it, and I like when it kind of goes in and then there's bumps. You'll see what I mean when I get further on and actually make them, but what I'm doing right now is making those little notches. So I'm kind of taking the knife in at an angle and then cutting straight down to make it a mostly straight line. Remember that we are going to be going over this later with the glue gun, so it's okay if it doesn't look perfect perfect, but kind of just play around with it and see what you like. Also, remember to go a little bit slow because you can always take off more wood. It's much harder to put the wood back. <laughs> so take your time, see what you want to do, check in on it often as you can see that I'm doing here. And then once you're happy with it, then you'll be good. <laughs> so after you do that, clean off your mess and plug in your glue gun. Once your glue gun is heated up, start putting on your hot glue. So I like having a dab at the end because I like a soft point and I like having a little bubble at the opposite end where the handle is. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm basically going in and filling that in. I think I'm also gonna do like more of a, a handle. I like having a noticeable handle part. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do some like lines, maybe making them a little bit wiggly. Also, don't worry too much about the stringy bits that always come with the glue gun because once the glue is dry we'll take all of that off. It's harder to do and you can kind of mess up your work if you try to do it while the glue is still wet. And also I should mention don't burn yourself with the glue gun. Be careful. It's a bad idea. Also if there are pets around shoo them out of the way for their own safety even if they growl at you. For this one I'm kind of doing it a little bit slower and going over more than once because I want it to be a little bit thicker and I don't want it to be even. If you do want it to be even and look neat and sleek, then you know you would use that technique instead, but 
I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit and kind of running the glue back over where I just was just to get a more knotted effect. The thing about the glue guns is that they dry so fast, which is really handy, and it helps if you want to layer things. So if you want to do different textures or textures on top of textures, it's really good for that. Also, if you wanted a more noticeable ridge, do a couple thin lines rather than one thick one. It's just a little bit easier to maneuver. Here I am finishing up the end of my handle part, and then I'm moving on to the little round bits that I put for the notches. I don't know why, I just really like that look. I think it's really fun. But yeah, pretty much just play around with it, take your time, and have fun. Remember that you're going to paint this after, so it's okay if it looks kind of weird and messy. And also, if you put glue where you don't want glue, you can always use your knife to, once it's dry, take it off again or cut part of it off. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. This is a pretty forgiving step. Once it's dry, it's time to paint it. First, make sure that it is completely dry and don't forget to unplug your glue gun so that you don't have, you know, a fire hazard or something. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the whole thing this solid brown, just so I make sure that everywhere has some paint on it. So I'm just doing one coat all over it. It doesn't have to be super neat as long as everything is covered in paint. I'm also going to do this in kind of two parts. So I'm going to do the top part of the wand and then I'm going to do the handle once it dries because last time I did this, I didn't think ahead and it was a big mess. So I'm doing it in two parts. You can also use a hair dryer to make the drying go a little bit faster. But remember, if you dry paint too fast, it will crack because the outside layer is drying faster than the liquid layer underneath and it's going to cause problems. If you like that effect, go for it. But if you don't want cracks and potentially flicking off paint, then if you do use the hair dryer, use it on the lower heat setting. So once you have it all covered in your base coat, what I like to do is add a second darker brown and then only mix it up a little bit so that when you're pulling out the paint, you're getting both browns at the same time and then kind of going over it. Not quite messy, but that way you have a little bit of texture. It's not all the exact same brown. There's a couple different shades in it. If you don't like that, if you want it more, like I said, slim and sleek, you can do the same color all through, but I find this just gives it a little more dimension and makes it look a little more realistic, for lack of a better word. Also, make sure sometimes certain paints don't stick to the glue very well. It's a little bit more of a slippery surface, so you might have to go over that a second time, so just take your time and go from there. Once that part is dry, you can work on the handle. Now, I like a slightly darker handle. That's just what I like, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm going in with my base coat, which is a slightly lighter brown, and I'm covering all that. This one is a little bit trickier because I have so much of the glue there that there's some notches and spots that I have to angle the brush properly. So just make sure that you're getting everywhere and that the paint isn't clumping up or missing any spots. As far as giving texture and mixing colors goes, it's easiest to do it while the paint is still fairly wet. So you don't want to put so much paint on it that it's like dripping. But here you'll see that I am dipping into the lighter brown a little bit and going over the wet dark paint and just kind of giving it a little more texture, a little more dimension and going over everything again and again and again. Same thing though, you can dry it if you want it to be dry between stages, but I find it's easiest to just air dry it. And that's basically all you have to do, just keep going over it and making it what you like. Don't forget you can also put more layers on. You can put different colors. If you have some gold paint, you can put a tiny bit of that in there just to give it an extra little shine, but it is 100% up to you. This is your wand. Have fun with it. Alright, so it has been a little bit of time. I set my wand down to let it dry and cleaned up my area. So this is the finished product. Ta-da! I am really happy with it. I like the like bumpy texture of this. I want it to look kind of like 
and all wiggly and fun. And then here I have my little wiggles that I did, my little rounded tip, my little gnarly bump at the end. And yeah. I am very, very happy with this. I mean, what else do you expect from a professional wand maker? Like, come on. <laughs> but yeah, so this is my finished wand. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you make your own wands. And I don't really use Instagram, but if you do, post on Twitter and take me. My Twitter handle is at Tibuggy. So if you make your own wand using this tutorial, please let me know because I would love to see it. That would be so freaking cool. But that is all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button to let me know because that really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of my videos. Starting next week, I'm gonna be posting every Wednesday and Sunday instead of Wednesday and Saturday. But subscribe so you can stay up to date with my reading and writing and whatever else I post. So I hope to see you guys next time. And until then, have a great day. Bye.